Back on Wii U, Platinum and Nintendo were best buds, with both Wonderful 101 and Bayonetta 2 being exclusive to the platform. And it seems that relationship continues on Switch with Bayonetta 3 and the brand new Astral Chain, a game in a world with an impending alien threat from a species called the Chimera, though mankind fights back by seizing the power of these Chimera for themselves. Though it of course isn't that simple. Astral Chain is both unlike any Platinum game that's come before, and extremely like everything that's come before. You'll notice the free cutting and health grab finishes from Metal Gear Rising, similar drawing mechanics to the one for 101 and these monster intros are very Bayonetta. Astral Chain though is slower, more thoughtful, it runs at 30 FPS, and I'd say the majority of the time you're not actually in combat. A game like Bayonetta is all about those moment to moment encounters as every pillar of the game hinges on the combat system. And while the slower approach to Astral Chain may sound like a list of negatives, that couldn't be further from the truth. Even the lesser frame rate doesn't feel like a detriment, as enemies are designed around big, telegraphed attacks. You still need reflexes, but it's not a game about reflexes. So it isn't always about combat, but the downtime in Astral Chain still manages to maintain that style and flair that's ever so prominent in the combat. For instance, the Platinum grading system, which is usually just reserved for combat, now also carries over to investigations. The majority of chapters take place in small sandboxes where you need to speak with people to gather a lead on exactly what's going on. You then get quizzed on the events, and while there's not a big punishment for not paying attention, you will of course get a higher grade and bonus goodies. Now this is still very much a linear game. There's 11 core chapters, with the majority of them lasting around an hour and a half. And while some areas are very briefly revisited, almost every chapter takes place somewhere different. Though the pacing can be a little problematic in the early hours of the game. One chapter had me going over half an hour without any combat encounter, but thankfully the action and stakes ramp up considerably as the game goes on. While the combat isn't the only focus now, my god is it fantastic. But of course, don't go in expecting Bayonetta. ZR is the only button to pummel enemies, and while you can of course change weapons, doing so breaks the combo, so you won't be juggling your light sword and your heavy sword and then a gun, you've got to commit to your combo. So on your own, you are actually kind of limited, but of course, you are not alone. The gist of the story is the world is under attack by Chimera. Most people can't see them, but a special task force and you're on have not only developed technology to see them, but also capture them. And yes, it's a little shady. You'll be double guessing yourself a lot in this story. Over the course of the game, you'll gain access to five different legions. So these are basically weaponized versions of the Chimera you're fighting. With your legion, suddenly your limited combat options are amplified. You can use the chain that connects the two of you together as a lasso, a tether, or even a grappling hook of sorts. That alone is quite substantial, but each legion brings its own unique twist. You can climb on the back of the Beast Legion, which is helpful in evading, the Bow Legion is great for long distance fights, and the Axe Legion has a defensive shield. Astral Chain is excellent at providing that feeling of mastery. When you spot an enemy, you'll instinctively know not only which Legion's best for taking them down, but also whether to use your baton or your gun, both of which are incredibly viable. If you're someone who often grows tired of character action games, I feel like this one might grab you. This isn't a button masher, you need to think about every action. There are so many different options, and if there's one area that you excel at, then you can double down on it when it comes to upgrading. You can basically either upgrade yourself or your legions. Personally, I try to balance the two, but if you really wanted to, you can just keep your default bat on and upgrade your legions the entire time. Sit back and let them do the work. Where Astral Chain truly thrives though is when it takes those legion abilities and applies them outside of combat. Like the Sword Legion has that free form cut attack, which comes in very handy when detethering enemies, but it can also be used to break down doors. It's great that the Arms Legion allows you to enter it and attack everything around you manually, but it also carries you across gaps. It's great that the chain can be used to jump from enemy to enemy, but it can also be used as an intricate jump button. Every element of your moveset serves a double purpose, and so even in those moments where you go ages without combat, there's never a jarring moment where you need to find your footing again. I think this might be one of Platinum's smartest systems yet. The core combat is so incredibly simple, but it's lifted by the sheer amount of possibilities granted by the Legion. Now if you want to, you can try and play the game co-op, but the setup is a little weird. Basically, it only lets you play with the Joy-Con on its side, and it's not so much like one of you controls the Legion while the other controls the Officer, it's more like you have half a controller each. So the secondary player by default controls the camera, holding down the L button lets them control the Legion, but the same is true when playing in single player, and the Legion still mostly attacks on its own, so there's no real advantage to playing this way. The fact that you control two players doesn't mean it's a better game with two people. 
For a game that's so much about exploration and freedom, Astral Chain does feel somewhat small. A lot of areas frankly look very similar, especially the Astral Plane which basically never looks different. And while the sandbox style levels are fun to explore, it can sometimes come across as a cost saving technique. Like you'll notice some areas during exploration seem primed for combat, and then lo and behold they're a combat hotspot later on. But then there's some levels that feel a lot more organic. It's kind of inconsistent, and despite being longer than the Bayonetta games clocking in at around 15 hours, the story doesn't feel fully explored. One plot thread isn't quite given enough attention, despite at one point being the core focus of the story. That said though, it is one of Platinum's better stories. There's a lot of mystery, you're never quite sure who to trust or if you're even the good guys, but more importantly, it's not afraid to have fun. There's a room at the police station full of cats, each of your allies is quirky and upbeat, and hey, even the vending machines talk to you. What can I do for you today? Thank you for looking. See you again real soon. This game has a really good vibe. And you know, the smaller scope is actually quite refreshing, but the pacing isn't quite there. The moments of exploration certainly help keep the combat fresh, but there are several moments that are just too long. Some levels remedy this by only having a few core objectives but an abundance of side quests, but again, it's not consistent. Some levels barely have any side quests, and those side quests can be pretty much anything. It could be your legion getting a balloon out of a tree, or you could be balancing boxes around town. So that's Astral Chain's core problem. The world, the combat, the exploration, they're all mechanically excellent. One moment I'm being utterly blown away and having some of the most fun I've had with the genre, and another moment I'm actually getting somewhat bored. Astral Chain is absolutely excellent, but it doesn't quite reach its full potential. Heck, you're even given a brand new mechanic right at the end of the game, with barely any chance to use it. Given another shot, I think the franchise could rival Platinum's very best, but as it is now, I liked Astral Chain a lot. There's definitely room for improvement, but the core gameplay is just so much fun. I don't think I've enjoyed a combat system this much in a very long time. It thrives in its limitations, it's mechanically simple, but you can do so much. And of course, you can pet the Beast Legion. Anyway, are you going to play Astral Chain? And if you have played it, let us know your thoughts down below. Until then, be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for a lot more on Astral Chain and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye.